Hello, welcome to my video about the integration of the KNX bus into my smart home. At first you need an interface. You see here my installation and to install the interface is very easy. You plug in the LAN cable here at the top. You plug in the KNX bus cables here at the bottom and it's working immediately without much configuration. My device I bought in 2014. It requires a DHCP service to be ready when it starts. It won't reconnect later, for example after an electricity cut. Therefore I installed a button to disconnect it from power to force a reset. I assume when you buy a new device it will not have that problem. You will see. After the hardware is installed and if you want to run a smart home uh, with the KNX system, I strongly recommend you to buy the ETS software. It's very well made. Uh, it's very easy to operate it after a few hours of learning curve. Um, you can connect the ETS to your interface and here you see in my case the monitor. Uh, of the bus, you see all the telegrams. Uh, the triple zero are virtual devices, the non triple zeros are physical devices, and they run with different group addresses, uh, which is the main communication part. So, in case you see with the ETS software that the system is working, you can go for the next step and integrate the KNX bus into your smart home system. In case you have, for example, Home Assistant, it has a KNX integration. I left the link here in my wiki and the address of the wiki, by the way, you find below the video. If you have another system other than Home Assistant, you need to check whether it supports KNX. If yes, it's great. If no, you have to reconsider. If you haven't up your mind yet about the system, of course, I'm sure you will ensure it supports KNX. In case you want to do it with a Raspberry Pi, as I've done it, and have your own software for the smart home, the first item to do is to install a daemon, which is opening a port which lets you access the interface. There are two daemons, the IPE daemon, which actually is depreciated, and the KNX daemon, which is a newer one. I'm personally still using the IPE daemon. It works fine with my interface and my ETS software, so for me no reason to change. This is how I start the daemon and the parameters are the same for both versions of the software. Once the daemon is running, you can issue uh, the first command on the Raspberry Pi on the command line. You issue the group's write command, you give the IP address of the, the, of the Raspberry running the daemon, you give a group address and you give a value. If you go, use groups write this as it's a zero or a one, an off or an on. In case this is a physically available address on your KNX system and you press enter, you should see an immediate reaction. Um, on top of those physical addresses, I use a lot of virtual devices. For example, I use the BH170 sensor to measure the brightness. And here you see the Python code. Uh, I average the sensor signal over a minute, 60 times with a delay of one second. The average I turn into a hexadecimal figure, and the hexadecimal figure I send to the KNX bus using the group write command. Here this is very convenient because later my smart home software listens to the IPE command and receives the brightness as a signal on the KNX bus. About the latency, uh, it's perfect. Uh, when I press enter, the effect happens uh, immediately. I can show you here an example. Uh, when I turn the light off here in my room, you will see an immediate reaction together with the sound of me pressing the enter key. So you see very quick, no delay, and also me pressing the enter key, I cannot feel uh, any delay. 
Uh, my smart home system uh, compares the current status to the room mode. The room mode is automatic. In automatic mode, the light should be on. So when the smart home system detects the light is off, it turns it on again. This is why it turned back up. If I switch it off again, you listen again and see the video, you see immediate reaction. So that's running very nicely. When I calculate the time lag, the latency, I end up with a maximum of a 50th of a second. And I think this is what we see, nothing. Also devices using if this and that or some Alexa routines, uh, they call CGI scripts and they issue the group write command to the KNX bus. So like this, I let more or less all my sensors, activators and devices communicate over the KNX bus centrally. So once the commands and all that is working, uh, you can start writing your uh, smart home script. Uh, you have an infinite loop and you listen to the telegrams on the KNX bus. Uh, so here you see some kind of template, how you do that in Python. There's one detail I want to draw your attention to. I'm using the poll function to detect errors. Uh, in case the correction to the daemon is lost, the KNX daemon, uh, if there is a problem, it will return something different than none and call the recover subroutine, which you find here. Uh, here the routine tries to reconnect until there is no error. That means uh, if there is a problem, the software will hold and try to reconnect. You only have to take care of the problem. And once the problem is solved, the software will continue seamlessly. The Raspberry Pi in my uh, smart home running the daemon, it's very reliable, I'm very satisfied. But once or twice a year, there is some hiccup somewhere every time on a different place, of course. So if that happens, I get an email. There is a problem with the connection to the daemon. I solve the problem and after the software continues seamlessly. That's very convenient. Um, and I can recommend to put effort into robustness of the software. It will pay off. In my wiki here, there is a lot of more information. And if I made you a little bit curious, uh, you find the address in my channel and below the video. Thank you very much for listening. Bye bye.